it makes me so mad. I am genuinely very conflicted about today's video. I've tried making this video a variety of times. Initially, it was going to be a how dare he sort of video, and then I sat on it for a little while, and then I thought, how dare I? And now we're here in the middle where I'm asking, I genuinely do not know if this is harmful and dangerous or if this is a me problem. So let's talk about Steve IEO. Hello there, my beautiful, lovely internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Like I said, this topic is a tricky one for me because uh, the fellow we are about to speak about today, Steve, has a massive social media following. He has achieved almost 10 million followers on TikTok. Way to go, man. That's very impressive. Has hundreds of thousands of followers uh, throughout Instagram and YouTube, has a massive presence, and does a lot of uh, comedy-related skits and bits now. But I did not know that when I first found him, because the way that I discovered him was on TikTok, scrolling through my For You page. I came across a video of a guy, this video right here, dressed in scrubs, where he starts off by saying, tips from the ER. Tips from the ER. In the rest of that video, he then uses the word we. Uh, when, when we see you here in the ER, here's what we are gonna be doing. And the content of that video was about emergency pelvic exams. And ironically, that was a video that I saw uh, the day that I had to later have an emergency pelvic exam. And what he talked about and how he talked about in his video made my anxiety, which was already high, go from like a seven to like a nine because of the crass and callous way that he presented this information. Now, as I dug in further, um, if you see this person, you might think that they represent a medical professional, but uh, he is not one. He is a retired ER tech. He previously worked as an ER tech. He was never a doctor, never a nurse. He was a tech, which is an incredibly important job. It's important to note that he no longer works in it and that he never was a doctor because the majority of people do think that he is a doctor. So in today's video, I am gonna present to you why I think this is dangerous and harmful, but also ask you if you think I might be wrong because I realize there are a lot of factors involved here and I am open to having my mind changed. As we wander into a bit of a controversial and colorful issue, I would like to thank our sponsor today, Skillshare. Skillshare is a returning sponsor, which I am thrilled about because I actively use their service. It is an online learning platform and community with thousands and thousands of classes and topics and is very simple and easy to use. Their courses are built in digestible bits with amazing instructors who make things very clearly. I have taken everything from watercolor to Final Cut Pro editing and more. Right now I am in the middle of the ultimate self-care playbook, Discover and Nurture Your Centered Self with JVN, Jonathan Van Ness, which is a fantastic course. He's great to listen to. I really enjoy it. And thanks to Skillshare's generosity, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get one month of a free trial meaning you can check out their library of courses completely free of charge. Not only will clicking that link help to support this channel, but it also is something I genuinely believe in. I have had a lot of skills sharpened and learned from Skillshare and I really enjoy, so I hope you check it out and let me know what you think. But now let's get back to the juicy stuff. So I wanna start off by showing three videos and my, my personal reactions to them. The first one you're gonna see is about pelvic exams. The second one is about self-harm and the last one is about when doctors can't figure out what's wrong with you in the ER. Now, I will warn you if you are someone who is sensitive to any of these subjects, the way that he's gonna talk about them is very flippant and very crass and it was upsetting to me to hear, so just know that going in. And of course, decide for yourself if this is something you'd like to watch. Tips from the ER, pelvic exams. Ladies, you got a lot going on downstairs. It's not uncommon for you to come to the ER for an emergency pelvic exam. First thing we're gonna do, strip you down to a hospital gown and get you onto one of our special GYN beds. We need a clear shot of the hole, motherfuckers. The doctor will then feel around, check you inside, outside, and stick a speculum into you to keep you open long enough. There's usually a third person in the room to chaperone the exam. This is for the benefit of both parties. Just in case the patient is crazy and says the doctor tickled them somewhere they didn't want to be tickled, or in case the doctor's crazy and tickles the patient somewhere they didn't want to be tickled. We'll never know unless there's a witness in the room to tell the judge they both tickled each other and liked it. So that was the TikTok that I saw on the same day that I had to have an emergency public exam. And uh, the, the words and the tone that he uses of being so crass is just the best word that I can think of. Like seeing someone dressed up as if they were a medical professional or a doctor, talking about like, ladies, you got a lot going on down there. And then making a joke at the end about something horrific that can happen. Like being sexually abused by a doctor during a pelvic exam is, is a, oh, I'm running out of words, is a horrific thing. So joking about it and sexualizing a procedure that is not sexual uh, is really gross to me, really frustrates me, personally. TikTok number two. Tips from the ER. Thoughts of hurting yourself? 
If you come to the ER with thoughts of hurting yourself, the first thing we're gonna do, sit you down and take everything away from you. Phones, clothes, necklace, bracelets, anything you could possibly use to hurt yourself, including the bra. We take no chances, motherfucker. If you tell us you're gonna hurt yourself, we will totally believe you. We'll get you a gown, some socks, and someone to keep eyes on you at all times, which means no more private bathroom privileges. I won't lie to you, motherfuckers. You will be waiting in the ER a very long time, and you cannot leave unless we say you can. I know it's impossible to realize in the moment, but suicide really is a long-term solution to a short-term problem. So again, this is giving information about some things that do happen in medical situations if you're coming in um, worried about harming yourself. Uh, things will be taken away from you so you can't hurt yourself. That's not wrong information, but the way it's presented by like, even the bra, motherfucker, um, and just the rest of that video, the tone of talking about something so serious, the fact that someone could hear this, being in a vulnerable mental position, maybe struggling with self-harm or suicide, that video is, the, the, uh, the tone is not helpful or inviting. It is taking an incredibly serious subject, presenting yourself as a professional on it, and then saying things that I honestly think could actively drive people away because of the way that you are presenting it. Like if I was thinking about hurting myself and someone was telling me, yeah, if you come, we're gonna take everything away from you, even your bra, motherfucker. Um, for me personally, and this is gonna vary for people, I'd be like, cool, then I'm just not gonna go there and deal with that bullshit. I'm not gonna go there and have everything taken away from me when I'm already in so much mental pain and not thinking straight. Just personal opinion. This is the one that really gets under my skin. Number three. Tips from the ER. We don't know what's wrong. That's right, after all the poking, prodding, touching, and undressing, your scans, your blood work, and your labs came back, and we can finally tell you that we have not one motherfucking clue why you are in pain. You think you'd be happy to hear that nothing's wrong with you, but you motherfuckers hate that answer. You'd rather be told you were dying. At least that would justify why you stressed out, rushed to the ER, and spent six hours at the hospital. Sometimes all you needed was a day off. Ibuprofen, rest, and a better diet. If something hurts to move, stop moving it. Hurts to move your arm? Stop fucking moving your arm. Learn some physical therapy. You'd be surprised how many people have no idea how to use their own bodies. Anyways, thanks for coming to see us. That'll be $2,000. It's hard for me to look past my own biases on this one because I am so blinded with rage at the suggestion that if a doctor cannot find what is wrong with you in the short period of time that you might be in the ER, that it's probably just your fault. You probably should have just taken ibuprofen. Uh, something really hurts. Stop moving it. Like, that's just... Oh, it makes me so mad because I have been that person in that situation where something is very wrong and I am dismissed and not taken seriously and literally given Advil and sent home when something is wrong. And the attitude that he presents of arrogance and being flippant and crass and doctors being gods basically if they can't figure out what's wrong with you like it's your fault makes me so angry because it's not a joke it is something that happens all the time and it's actively hurt my life and hurt my mental health and hurt my body so okay i'm gonna calm down for a second but those are the three tiktoks that really got under my skin keep in mind this man steve also has hundreds of other videos making all kinds of different jokes. Again, not my brand of humor in general, but I, I get why people like him. I get why he's a likable guy. I understand what he's doing. However, for me personally, this kind of content, especially mixed in with like other harmless, funny things is what makes it potentially so dangerous. Because the way that TikTok works, if you don't know, uh, if you're scrolling through TikTok, you're not seeing people's like profiles and information in the general course of like scrolling through TikTok, right? You're just coming across people's videos. And the way that this guy presents himself is if he is a professional, which he is not. Like the jokes that are made in the midst of these videos are pulling on things that can be very painful for people. Going back to the self-harm one, talking about like, you're not gonna be able to go to the bathroom alone anymore. Like you're picking at something that could be a very sensitive and sore spot for someone who is already in a compromised mental place. And so much of this reinforces the stereotypes and mindsets that exist about patients and doctors already. Like going through his page, so much of it is derogatory and a little bit degrading and talking down. And maybe the information is technically for the most part 
fairly accurate, but the way that information is packaged, as we all know, is very important. As I went down this TikTok rabbit hole, a few things started to really get under my skin. Number one, the fact that he does not clearly identify in his TikToks that he is not a doctor, he is not a nurse, he is not a tech, he is someone who is performing comedy now. Because even if you look through his hashtags, uh, like this one for instance, you're gonna see where is the GYN gurney when you need it? Nowhere. Um, hashtag hospital, hashtag judge, hashtag witness, partner, bed, emergency, chaperone. At least on the videos that I'm showing here, or if you go to the hashtags, it doesn't show it anywhere. There's no indication. He uses the word we as if he was a part of it. To find that out, you actually have to go to his profile where you'll see jokes, not advice, and that he is now a retired ER tech. From my understanding, it previously did not say that, but this is something he has added as time has gone on. So a couple weeks ago, I decided to kind of speak up on this, and I made a couple TikToks. The first one, I talked about seeing that video about pelvic exams the day that I had to have one. So super ironically, the same day that I saw that video, I ended up in the ER for an emergency pelvic exam, and I wanted to take just a moment to share the impact that video had on me and how it made the experience exponentially worse for me. And then as I kind of got more heated on the subject uh, and the fact that people genuinely thought this guy was a doctor and that the advice that he was given was like advice from a doctor, uh, I made a video asking that TikTok add a simple warning label at the very bottom of the screen just saying like this does not come from a medical professional, right? Um, because it's not clear if you're watching his videos and only his videos that that is the case. In much the same way that this app already adds warnings to anyone spreading information about COVID or anyone performing a harmful or dangerous action, can we please add warning labels to people spreading misinformation about medical knowledge while wearing scrubs and appearing to be a person who is professional? I haven't gone through the process before of sort of criticizing some major creator who is very beloved. I felt like this message was a good example that encapsulated a lot of the responses that I got. It was a, a, yeah, people are very passionate about this topic. The comment section pretty universally decided that I was a Karen uh, and needed to sit down and shut up about it. And initially that, that kind of got under my skin and made me mad because I'm like, I'm not asking for this guy to be canceled. I'm just asking that some like basic warning is added because I think this could be dangerous. I think the fact that most people from everything that I have seen and read do think this man is a doctor and he is giving out advice and the way that he is speaking about very serious subjects that he does not have the expertise in some cases to be speaking on and that people are hearing this as if it is coming from a doctor. It's suggestive of the fact that he is a professional at least. I was like, this is bad. This is wrong. I don't think that this is a safe thing. Now I am not alone in this. There are a number of nurses and doctors, actual nurses and doctors on TikTok and Instagram who have come forward. They've said the same thing. They've said, we do not like what is happening here. We think it's dangerous. We think it's wrong. But on the flip side, there are people who absolutely adore this man. There are people who think it's absolutely hilarious. It's just the fun funniest thing ever, and to make the very accurate comment that comedy is how a lot of people deal with serious subjects, and to not rain on that parade just because we don't find it funny. I feel like this could surprise some people. To a large extent, I do agree. Um, a good friend of mine has always made the comment about comedy that either it's all okay or none of it's okay. And for a long time, I very much disagreed with him. I was like, no, there are some jokes that should not be made. But as I have continued to live life, uh, I've changed my mind on that a little bit. And I now don't know that there are ever jokes that should never be made. I think it comes down to context and audience because very, very serious subjects like limb loss, disability, sexual assault are things that in coping with them, I and other people I know have made very dark, awful jokes, right? That like shouldn't be said to kind of laugh at and take the power away from something that is such a serious subject. And I don't think a lot of those jokes are okay in every situation. I think it is very specific to audience and context. I do very much believe that comedy should be a space where it is okay to push certain boundaries at certain times with certain audiences. And because of that, honestly, I don't watch a lot of comedy because there are a lot of things I, I, I don't like how people joke about. I don't want to be in the middle of listening to a comic and hear a rape joke and then be really angry or a little bit emotionally messed up about it because it's something that's personally affected me. I don't think they're a horrible, awful person who should burn for saying that, but it is not something I am ever going to appreciate. It's not something I'm ever going to find funny coming from some dude on stage making a joke. This is a big reason why I don't go to live comedy like at all. And I don't watch a lot of comedy stand-up specials. There's one time where we got tickets to see this pretty controversial comedian and I was like, you know what, Brian, I know that this is someone that you enjoy, you find funny, 
I am just gonna get mad and I am just gonna wanna like stand up and stomp out of there if I have to go to that. So I'm not gonna do that because that is not the point of this event. And he brought a friend who appreciates that kind of humor with him instead. Uh, just because I don't find something funny I don't think that it shouldn't be said or shouldn't be done. However, context matters. Uh, so when I see this guy who is dressed up like a doctor making jokes and belittling, in my opinion, patients, belittling the very real experience of uh, how traumatic trying to get healthcare in our country can be, talking about the fact that if doctors can't find what's wrong with you, maybe you should have just stayed home, maybe you should have taken an Advil, um, maybe you just wasted your time at the ER and you're mad about it just because they couldn't figure it out in like two hours, and you just don't want to make peace with the reality that you wasted your time and money, which is why you want something to be wrong, and how patients are treated sometimes is awful. And to see these jokes reinforcing these stereotypes that are actively harming people makes me angry. And I realize that this is something that I have a lot of emotion about. Going back to the pelvic exam one, right? One of the, if not the biggest reason that people have to have pelvic exams in an emergency room is because of sexual assault. So talking in such an incredibly crass, flippant, and sexualized way about something that is very traumatizing to a lot of people makes me very angry. His account is both beloved and very controversial. I know it has been banned at least twice, but it always comes right back. Um, so I'm not really sure what's happening behind the scenes with TikTok. I'm not advocating for him to be banned. I am just saying that this stuff is very serious and perhaps should come with more explanation or with a warning. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, this is ridiculous, you shouldn't be taking any kind of medical advice or getting medical information from TikToks, but the reality is, is that people do. Um, whether or not people should, people do. People see representations of professionals on social media and that does factor into their thinking. The idea that that is not influencing or impacting people in any way, I, I honestly think is absurd because that is not how uh, the power dynamics of social media and being someone who presents things online works. There is a certain level of responsibility and spreading responsible information. And initially I was gonna make a video about like how awful I think these things are, but I have been sitting on this for weeks, acknowledging the fact that maybe this is funny to people, maybe this is helpful to some people, maybe it um, provides information in a comedic tone that people can listen to and maybe it, it actually improves their medical experience or their medical impression. I have a hard time believing that, but that's my problem, not yours. I know from my comment sections that there are people who have not gone to see doctors because of this man's TikToks, but I also know from reading other comments there are people who have felt more comfortable. Is there a problem here? Is there something that's wrong here? Because I feel like there is, but I also know that I don't know everything. Um, I know that there are probably factors that I'm not considering, and if that's the case, I would really love to hear them and consider them down below. From where I sit, I think this is harmful. I think it is unwise um, and potentially extremely dangerous to sit in front of a camera, giving tips from the ER, using the word we as if he is a part of that community, dressing up the way that he does, and not making it clear that he is not a medical professional unless you take extra steps, right? Unless you go into his profile, his bio, and read that. So I'm gonna wrap this video up by asking you the question, what do you think? Is this harmful? Is this dangerous? Is the danger that it poses more than the comic relief um, to you personally? I want to make it really clear that I'm not trying to like cancel this guy. Um, Steve, hey, on the off chance that you're watching, none of this is being like you suck or I hate you. I just very much disagree with the tone and the way that you present subjects and I have known it to personally be harmful to myself and other people that I know. Uh, the members of my audience, not, not everyone at all, but I know at least a decent percentage are people who have had similar experiences. Like I have um, difficulty in healthcare frustrations, chronic issues not being taken seriously by doctors, trauma, amputation, things of this nature. And so uh, this was one reason I really wanted to ask this community in particular, people who have been affected by some of the stuff that he jokes about, um, how you take it, you know, how, how you receive that. A huge thank you again so much to our sponsor. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I absolutely love working with them because like I said, I use their service all the time. I've used it for video editing, for photography, for Instagram, for watercolor, um, all different kinds of things. It's really a, a great little place. Checking out that link down below not only helps to support my channel, but also is something I genuinely believe in and I think is a lot of fun. Big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for continuing to support this channel and enabling me to do what I do here. Thank you for your generosity and your kindness and your support. To you watching this video right now, thank you for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today as I wave around my coffee cup. Apparently this makes a lot of people nervous. There is actually coffee 
coffee in it. Let me see if I can show you without spilling. Yeah, you can see. And since this morning, I have a zero spill record, so it's it's a good day. You could be anywhere else in the world doing anything else, and you chose to hang out with me for a few minutes, and I really appreciate that. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Have you heard from